Thank you for joining the Reverend Dr. Sean Michael Greener, radio host, national pastor, author, and speaker for Sundays with Dr. Sean. Hold on tight. Here comes the truth. Welcome to our Spreaker audience. We appreciate you joining us. We also uh, we have a nap there, an app there. Sound like I was saying I have a nap there. I'd like to have a nap. I could use a nap. I could for sure use a nap. There's no doubt about that I could use a nap. A nap would be great. And I'm going to get a nap eventually. Eventually. Thank you all for tuning in. Hey, uh, we're here on Spreaker. The app, the the Ninja Pastor app, is uh, free on uh, iTunes. Or not iTunes. We are on iTunes. We're populated there. There's a bunch of other places. But um, on the App Store and Google Play, I think it's called, for Android, whatever it is for Android. We're on that. So it's free. doesn't cost you a thing. We don't track you or do any of those other things. You'll see. It's very benign. Uh, but that way you can get the, the messages audio only. And hey, Miss Shemaine Mich- Nugent, good to see you. Say hey to Ted for me and all your sweet puppy dogs and other many animals you have living on any of your places. And uh, thank you for representing. I watch some of your fitness videos and good lands I can't keep up with you. Uh, I don't know many people that can, but thank you for ministering to people through good health and nutrition. It's great to have you listening. Um, We are excited to go through this book. It is The Bible Summary for Real People, written by Dr. Sean Michael Greener. That would be me. And uh, this is my second uh, print book, and we got a third one coming now called Hashtag Fraud Life. Hey, Ty, how are you doing? Dawn, how you doing? Michael, good to see you all. Good for all of you to turn, tune in. So it's it's been a tumultuous little bit of time, hasn't it? And uh, it's going to be a tumultuous time. And that's why Scripture is... Can you all hear me all right? I adjusted the sound and all that stuff, so I don't know if that's good or bad. So anyway, suffice it to say, um, these are some challenging times. And they're going to get harder. Uh, people like, and and uh, not for nothing, we didn't plan this. Uh, we've not ever, Shemaine and I have never talked before, but the Nugent family lives off the land. I mean, that's what they do. And so they're prepared at any given time. Somebody said, why are they all the time hunting? And uh, Jim Shockey and th- those types of guys, why are they always hunting? Well, one, they teach other people how to hunt and do it right, do it well. But two, you know, you fill your freezer. That's what you do with the best possible meat there is in the world. Uh, organic, grass-fed, you know, all those things. Super healthy for you, super healthful for you. And so ultimately it comes down to this, that, you know, for times such as these, we never think that these things are going to happen. We never do. We never, you know, pe- regular people. I don't refer to myself as a regular person, uh, but um, I'm, I'm irregular. But... uh Hey, Peter, how you doing? Thank you for joining. But that being said, I, I think it's important to... It's okay to think differently. It's okay to think differently. It's okay. Uh, the whole prepper thing, um, that got a bad name. You know, whenever shows are being made about preppers, they always pick the real weird and wild ones, right? They don't ever pick the ones that are You'd never know it. You'd never know that they prepared for things. And I think once Y2K happened, I think a lot of people, they just didn't, um, they lost a lot of respect for people putting putting away and all that. Uh, like I said yesterday, I have about 285,000. Of the 4 million listeners, I have about 285,000 of my listeners that are LDS, Latter-day Saints. You know them as Mormon. Um, and the Mormon community is... is uh, they're known historically. They're they're very well prepared. They're individually and by community. They're very very well prepared for anything. I think that's a good thing to do. I don't think there's anything at all wrong with that, and I think it's wise to prepare for whatever might come down the pike as best you can. And for preppers, this is just a regular day. These days are regular days. They're not. There's not. Um, 
there's not a major delineation between the days. Even when things like this happen, you say, oh, I bet when things like this happen. Well, people who are prepared, hunters, fishers, gatherers, gathering what God has put on this earth to sustain us. There are also people that know how to protect themselves. There are people who know how to provide for themselves and their family. There are also people who understand how the breakdowns of society can happen and what you have to do in those types of things and in those circumstances. Most of the people I know uh, that are hunters and fishermen and fisherwomen and uh, hunter-gatherers, preparers, people that, uh, that are of a more independent ilk, they are also Bible-believing people. They're all, they believe in God. They believe in Christ. They believe in the resurrection. They believe that we've been redeemed, that we've been saved. These are, these are not wackadoo people. They are very, very normal people who say, hey, you know, in the event something bad happens, in the event the supply chain gets interrupted, uh, in the event the normal process of food and food delivery gets disrupted, well, let's, let's make some, let's take some steps. And a lot can be learned from them. Have some medical supplies. Uh, have some, you know, if you're on a, a, a medicine, a pharmaceutical that you, you have a prescription that you have to take every day, well, you should probably have more than one month supply. You should probably think about having, I don't know, maybe, maybe go with two or three months supply. And a lot of places will give you discounts, uh, especially do mail order. Hey, Lynette, I know, I know pigs in a blanket, mom's recipe. I bet it smells good. You probably already tasted it. Lynette's my sister-in-law. She married my brother and she notified me that she's making pigs in a blanket. We call them pigs in a blanket. I think other people, it's cabbage and wrapped around rice and hamburger and the tomato we sauce and it's really good and my mom made it amazing and she just made it and she thought she would send me a, a text message with a little dancing girl talking about, I made it, it smells so good, it's so good, it tastes so good, just like mom. Rude. She knows she rude. Anyway, uh, you know, people just, and farm people, you know, farm people. I remember growing up, you know, I grew up in Sussex County, Delaware. And I live, I live in North Carolina now on the coast. And I, I and I'm sure that it happened here. It happens anywhere in the South, you know, especially when you're dealing with the media. They love to make fun of Southern folk. Uh, not just Southern folk, but country folk. They'll make fun, clinging to your Bibles, clinging to your religion, right? Clinging to your guns. I heard that somewhere. My thing is, is, is that people, country people just know how to get by. They've worked hard. They, they know what it's like to work hard. They know what it's like to hunt and fish for your own food. You know, they have freezers full of meat and they generally know how to fix stuff or make something work. You know, they don't have to dial the phone a whole lot because they do it themselves. And that self-sufficiency, that independence is very freeing. It's very, very freeing. I would say this. I think that extends also to, I don't think I know, um, that independence also extends to faith because when times like this happen and you all know I counsel people and not just gold star families and and um you know tier one operators as well as you know war fighters of all different stripes and so we provide you know immediate immediate counseling intense counseling in all kinds of circumstances a lot of the people that have never been exposed to challenges like they're exposed to, they crumble when times like this come along. This is somebody said to me the other day, or it was today, it was this morning. I was actually in the grocery, one of my last grocery trips for probably a month or so. Um, she said, well, as a, as a husband, and a, I'm presuming a husband and wife, I probably shouldn't do that, but a man and a woman, and they were together, obviously. And, uh, 
she said, I'm just afraid to turn the television on. The bad news is just, it's over and over and over and over. And it's never going to stop. I feel like our country's just going to fall apart. And she's talking back and forth to him. And I leaned, I leaned in and I could hear, because I didn't have my hearing aids in. I leaned in and I could hear him saying, yeah, it's really bad. It's really bad. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. Just kind of like giving up. <laughs> I thought to myself, come on. You going to give up that easy? You know, put on your big boy pants. Look some stuff up. Figure out some stuff. Don't quit before the battle's even begun. Well, I mean, I could I could only be quiet for so long. I said, you know, I have hope. I heard what you're saying about it. I don't know what we're going to do. And the news being all bad. But I'm going to say this. I have hope. Know this. The media, if it bleeds, it leads. And that goes for Fox News too. Fox News just runs these. I've gotten a bunch of notifications on my thing and on the computer over here talking about, oh, a million. It's topped a million cases. We're well over a million cases months ago for the flu. And more deaths than we've had in, in this COVID-19. I'm not minimizing the COVID-19. It's a different thing. I believe it's biowarfare. Uh, and I believe that's why it's so different. And that's why it's so difficult to defeat and all these different things. But they don't mention the number of people that have recovered from it. They don't mention the number of people that they, they didn't even stay in the hospital. They got tested. They tested positive. They sent them home with medicine or whatever. Said, do this. If this happens, call us back. You come back in. They never even needed treatment, really. But you don't hear those numbers on the press because it's doom and gloom. It's doom and gloom. Now, you may have heard, so I told the guy, it was none of my business, but I told the guy, I said, listen, I don't know about you, but I know for me, I'm in charge of protecting my family. And that includes my attitude. That includes my personal strength. That includes my ability to say, we're going to be all right and make it happen. And I said, not for nothing, but I trust God. Times are going to get tough, but you know what? This country wasn't founded by a bunch of wusses who ran around in fear all the time. She looked at him. He looked at her. He kind of tilted his head. He went to shake my hand. I said, whoa, got the uh, social distancing going on here. And he said, thank you. I need that kick in the pants. I said, no problem. It's what I do. And then they sack my groceries and the lady says at the grocery, which I love, we have an embarrassment of riches for groceries where I live. Man, we have nice places. Still no toilet paper in any of them, but what are you going to do? I got there right as the senior hour was ending. And I know I'm touching my face. I got there right as the senior hour was ending. And let me tell you, all that toilet paper was gone. It was out of there. They didn't have any. But you saw these little silver haired folks in their buggies. With their little thing of toilet paper. Some of them had covered them up with canned goods and stuff. You know, then we get mugged. <laughs> hey, it's a necessity. What are you going to do? Hey, Dave. How you doing, Daniel? Good to see you. So anyway, I'm going to jump into this. But I wanted to encourage you on the front end. Don't give up so easy. Yeah, it's going to be hard. It's going to get real, real hard. There's there's no doubt about it. This is what happens. You know, something like this happens. you got to do something about it. Oh, I started to tell you about Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff. They think that what we need now, above anything else, is we need another investigation into President Trump as to how he is handling this COVID-19 crisis. That's what they think we need as a nation. They think that we need to have a whole nother investigation. That's what they think we need. They think that the best thing for us as a nation, would be, let's do another investigation. Hey, Nancy Flanagan, how are you, dear? That's what Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff and all those other folks, they think would be the, the best thing for us as a nation is, let's just, let's just go on and have another one. And you know, while we need money, let's send money to the Kennedy Center. Why not? Let's do that. And, and while we're at it, let's do another investigation. We haven't spent enough on empty investigations that, oh, we got him dead to rights. It's slam, slam dunk case. And then, well, you didn't let us have witnesses. Well, we let you have the gavel for a very long time. 
know what I'm saying? We let you we let you run off at your mouth and tell us every day that oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's 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 open and shut case. You got to stop listening to these people. They're nut jobs. They're power hungry nut jobs. They should not be allowed to be in charge of a, a little league uh, financial account. They shouldn't be in charge of anything. These people can't be trust, trusted for nothing. Why we trust these people at all, I don't know. And you know what? They Their constituents, I believe, are always with their hand out. And they always keep them just poor enough. You ever notice that? Democrats say they always keep them just poor enough. Hey, Jerry, good to see you. Hey, Cindy. They keep them just poor enough. Man, we're just going to keep you poor enough. Where you th- And we keep telling you, the boogeyman is right over there. It's got an R after their name. The boogeyman is those gun people. Oh, those terrible people. The hunters, they're killers. They just kill indiscriminately. They don't care about the environment. The boogeyman are people that go out on the water. Hey, look what I'm wearing. Sea Hag Marina. Look right there. Speaking of water, I didn't even plan that. Steenhatchee, Florida. People make their living on the water. Hey, Thomas, how you doing? Good to see you. The left, all they really know how to do is say, you did this wrong. How do you feel? I should have done it. I don't know, but you did it wrong. And we're going to impeach you for it. We got a guy that's running for president, the presumable president, He's the presumable nominee, Joe Biden. God bless him, his family. And, you know, the, look, I'm not a that kind of doctor. I'm a doctor, but I'm not that kind. Something's wrong with the guy. There's a whole lot of things wrong with the guy. If you think he's actually going to be the nominee or the president, they know they're, they're not blind. I was going to say they're not dumb, but sometimes I think, boy, they are dumb. But they're not blind. They they know this guy's got either dementia or Alzheimer's or atherosclerosis plaque of the brain or some kind of thing. I'm not trying to diagnose him, but something seriously wrong with the fella. Not to mention he's very handsy. He he is a he is a he pinned he pinned my badge on when I was a police officer, Newcastle County police officer. He pinned my badge on, and and he and he's very personable. He was very personable back then, as long as you agree with him. You know, you disagree with him, he'll call you fat or some other kind of thing because he knows he can get away with it. You know, the tolerant left. Can you all see how messed up my glasses are? I am looking at these glasses. No wonder they're all sideways on my case, on my face. Look at that. It's all sideways. See right here? I don't know what happened. I think I fell asleep with them on my face. These are titanium. And they're, look, they don't fold up. Now, I like that in a way, but you know, you can't, how are you going, you know how you do that? I can't do that. Anyway, but I, I don't know they're on my face and I fall asleep and I put my face right in the pillow and oh, there goes a commercial fisherman right now. I'd swing around and show you, but you can't see it from here. But there's a waterway right across my yard and the other people's yard and there's the waterway and then the ocean and there's boats back and forth all day long. What do you think those people are doing? They're catching fish and all kinds of other things, shrimp, uh, to feed their families and, and commercial fishermen. And that's what they do, you know, feed their families. You know, if, if a leftist had to do something like that, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They'd be like, oh, I don't know what to do. This is very dirty and smelly. You know, oh, you have to be out here all day. You leave that early in the morning? You can't leave early? At the, you can't leave later than that? Like, I'm like more of a 10, 11 kind of guy, you know? I don't know how they allowed to run for office. I'm going to say one more thing and I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. Somebody needs to tell AOC and Rashida Tlaib and the other chick that they hang around with. There goes another commercial fisherman right there. Coming back from a long, hard day. They need to tell him, shut up. First of all, Rashida, you need to stop wearing the Hezbollah colors and flag and scarf. They're terrorists. You are too. Get out. AOC, you're just a nut job. And uh, what's the other one's name? Yemeni. Omar. 
Elon Omar. Get out of here. Just get go back to your country. Came here as a refugee. We paid for her to live the whole time from start to finish. Came here. Educator. Did all these things. Paid for her food. Paid for her lodging. All that stuff. Medical care. The whole bit. And all she's done is complain about America. Guess what? That is what Islam does. They take advantage. Y'all, we ought to be done with her. Get out. I, you don't like it. You can lump it. That sounds very mean, Pastor Sean. Dr. Sean, that's mean. It's not mean. God put us, God gave us this country based on freedom and liberty. It's not mean at all. Stop being a wuss. Stop thinking Christian is tantamount to being a wuss. That's dumb. I don't know who told you that. We're not supposed to be wusses, folks. We're not supposed to be wusses, especially pastors. The problem, here's the problem. Some pastors, they don't, have never had a job. They've never had a job. They don't know what it is to work and like have a hard job. They, the pastor is a hard job. There's nothing easy about it. But I'm just saying, they come into ministry that all they've ever done is ministry school and ministry. They've never had another occupation. I don't know how you identify with, with your congregation. 99.9% .9 of your congregation are working people. That's why I love our pastor, Phil Ortigo, Scotts Hill Baptist Church. Looks like we're not going to meet for a whole nother month, if not more. And I'm missing it, y'all. Yeah, I watch it online and I like it. It's, it's nice and that's good they all do it. It's amazing to me. But I'll tell you what, I can't wait to get back with my people, Scotts Hill Baptist Church. Anyhow, Joshua. Real Bible, or the real, oh, that's the back. That's Surf City. That's right down. You go out, straight out here. Let me show you. You go straight out there and go that way. You go north, and that's where you're going to see, oh, let's see here. You're going to see, I had a reminder pop up, take my medicine, but I took it already. See, I was smart. I got ahead of myself, but then I forgot to cancel the reminder, so apparently I'm not as smart as I think I am. So anyway, you go out there, you go down there. This is... Surf City, Sunrise. I took that photograph. Yeah, love it. The book of the Bible is Joshua. The author is Joshua, with the exception of the ending, which is believed to have been written by Phineas, the high priest who witnessed the very events recounted in this book. The date of writing was 1407 to 1383 BC, and the number of chapters is 24. To whom was it written? I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Not everything is written to you. This was written to the nation of Israel. Sorry. We benefit from reading it. We do benefit from reading it. I don't know what they're saying. Connection. Low connection. That's dumb. I, I know for... I have one, I have a, one gig of, of uh, internet. My internet's a thousand megabytes ridiculous that's a facebook thing i gotta believe that anyhow now they make me mad because they they're starting to censor my posts uh i posted something the other day and they they just made it disappear and i posted it again they made it disappear again posted it again they made it disappear again then finally they sent me a notice saying oh you violated community standards stupid but it's their ballpark you know it's their ball it's their bat it's their bases it's their stadium we're just playing in it. Got to accept that. So it was written to the nation of Israel. The purpose of the writing was the conquest and division of the land of Canaan. Over the course of 50 years, this bunch of whiners, I know, rude, transforms into a nation with obedience and resolve to do God's perfect will. See, it turned out good, right? But they were doing some whining. Let's be honest. Let's call it what it is. They were doing some whining. You know, I talked yesterday about the manna when God provided them. Oh, we're hungry. We want something to eat. God made that manna fall. Enough for every day. Fresh every day. He said, don't save it. I'll give you enough every day. What do they do? They want to save it. Gets eaten up with more. Anyway, you know the story. Or maybe you don't, but I'll tell you the story sometime when we get to it. We complain an awful lot. If we listen to ourselves, we complain an awful lot. I do. Guilty. Guilty. 
So anyway, I'll read this again. Over the course of 50 years, this bunch of whiners transforms into a nation with obedience and resolve to do God's perfect will. Twelve distinctly separate but inarguably connected tribes serve to enact the will of God in the land of promise. The key to this transformation is strong and unquestioning obedience of the Lord God by a leader who refused to compromise the direction of God. He said, hey, Bill, good to see you. He said, do this. And Joshua did that. God said, do this. Joshua didn't say, I'm going to think about that. Let's see how I feel about it. I'm going to, um, maybe I'll have a latte and consider how that makes me feel. I don't think they had lattes. Maybe they had espressos. I'm going to tell you, I love espressos. Mm. Like the real ones. Mm. Not allowed to have it anymore. Anyway. No, he didn't do any of that. He said, okay. God said jump. He asked how high on the way up. Joshua was the man God ordained for this holy task, leading the people of Israel into the land of Canaan, promised to them. When you buy my book, The Bible Summary for Real People, Amazon, all those other places, you will see that I have Joshua was the man God ordained, underlined, and bold. And you will see that leading the people of Israel into the land of Canaan promised to them, underlined. Not Palestinians, not anybody else, not any other people on earth. God promised that land to Israel. not terrorists. The swinging of the sword would be required of the Israelites because the people of Canaan were embroiled in ungodly behavior as we know of God, and as we know of God, he routes out evil by whatever means necessary, including killing the disobedient. You may not like that. We're in the age of grace. This is the age of law. I don't even know why you spent time writing about the age of law. It's insignificant. The age of grace means nothing without the age of law. And by the way, there's an awful lot of the law that we are still subject to, and you can debate that till you're blue in the face, but you would be wrong, and I would be right, and that's okay with me. We can still have a meal. I mean, whatever you want. Not beets, Lynette. I'm watching you. The title of the book, this book of the Bible is in Hebrew, Hosea, or Salvation. Our salvation comes in the form of obedience to God before he has to reprimand us. Or we choose the more painful route of having to be corrected by God. Listen, we don't change most often when we see the light. We change when we feel the pain and the burn of the torch because we're stubborn. Look, I don't know where you stand on abortion. I'm pretty clear about it. Anybody that knows me, and, and, and I know plenty that are listening that have had abortions, and God bless you. God, God, if you have gone to the throne and said, Father, forgive me, he has forgiven you, and he said, I'll remember that no more. But abortion as a policy among a people, as a, as a, a, a medical procedure, how in the world? You understand that these people, the leftists, the Nancy Pelosi's, the, the Adam Schiff's, they think that if you have a baby, you should be able to kill the baby after the baby's born. That should be okay. They think that you should be able to kill the baby as the baby is being born. Woman's right to choose. No. And I want you to understand, if, you, if you've had an abortion, God has redeemed you. He's not redeeming you. He has redeemed you. If you have placed your faith in him, and said, Father, forgive me. He has forgiven you, and he said he'll remember it no more. Let that be the last I have to tell you about that. Don't live with that on top of you. Don't live with that on top of you. There's no point. 
There is no point in the redemptive power of the empty cross and the empty grave, the victorious grave, if we live mired in our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Bottom line. But I am telling you, we as a nation have thumbed our noses at God. We've done it. We've done it for generations. The book of Joshua details several unique and miraculous events. Those events include the River Jordan divided. That's Joshua 3, 14 through 17. Supernatural intervention in nature to rescue an obedient people. An obedient people. To rescue an obedient people. Not a disobedient. An obedient people. Let's get that. An angel appearing to Joshua. Joshua 5, 13 through 15. Supernatural visitation from an angel to point out to Joshua that he was standing on holy ground, consecrated by God himself. The walls of Jericho collapsing. That's Joshua 6, 1 through 20. Supernatural intervention and re-engineering of physics. The re-engineering of physics, folks. Of human-made structures to make them fall without explosives. I want you to understand that when you pray for things, God's not limited by our understanding of science. He's not. He's not limited by our understanding of science. He's not limited by anything. An angel. Oh, the River Jordan divided. Supernatural intervention in nature to rescue an obedient people. I want to. I want to. I want you to understand. I want to go back to that. I want you to understand. Obedient people. He rescues obedient people. The storm of hailstones, 10 verse 11. God controlling nature to affect the attention of his people. He controlled nature. He created it. He can control it. He is without limit or measure. The sun and the moon standing still, Joshua 10, 12 through 14. God's impact in our lives should be supernatural and unlimited. I don't say that lightly. You know what I mean? I don't say that lightly. God's impact in our lives should be supernatural and unlimited. We, there, there is no limit. Anyway, the book of the Bible, Judges, or Shofatim, Rulers, Judges, Saviors. The author was likely Samuel. The date of writing, well, the precise date is unknown. However, the writing commences during the reign of Saul and continues for 350 years. The number of chapters is 21. To whom it was written, Israel. We can learn a lot from it, but it wasn't written to us. It was written to Israel. Why was it written? What was the purpose? Detailing the conversation of 12 tribes into one nation. The conversion of 12 tribes into one nation while reminding the reader that if we are disobedient to God, we are in trouble. Our judgment and deliverance comes not from human beings, but from God. Now, this is my personal summary. Let's see here. In the process of becoming a nation, instead of a compilation of 12 separate but related tribes, Israelites experienced the searing wrath of God for their disobedience and the intense blessing and providence of a God who is to be obeyed. Only by faith are we propelled to our destiny determined by God. The great faith of the people of God was rewarded with good times and a healthy period for the Israelites. However, the incident of Samson examines the contrast of lifelong obedience to God and the penalty for the disobedience despite lengthy obedience. God is a just God. The laying out of the fleece, just also talked about there by Gideon, who heard the word of God in direction, but he still needed more direction and proof. Most people point to the laying out of the fleece as a tool that we should use today to, dis to disclose the will of God, yet they are terribly wrong. Faith is faith in what we do not see or know by clear physical evidence and the laying out of the fleece expresses doubt in God and our weak faith. 
There are often rash vows offered to God to rescue one from the place of their own doing. We make hasty vows, as in Jephthah's uh, rash vow in chapter 11, 29 through 40, which resulted in him having to sacrifice his own dear daughter to honor what he what had to be one of the stupidest vows I've ever heard. If your only child is your dear daughter, why would you vow to sacrifice whoever would come to the door when you return? It's insane. Samson's incredible physical strength was most assuredly a gift directly and exclusively from God. Yet he lost himself in the mission of God through the temptations all men and all women face. The nation of Israel was in spiritual and moral decline shortly after their great leader Joshua died. This, to me, echoes the importance of powerful and dependable spiritual leadership in the world, the nation, the home, the marriage, and the heart. Now, let's see. I'm going to do, I'm going to do Ruth, and then I got one more thing to say about what's going on in the country, and then I'm going to let you go. So the book of the Bible, Ruth, from the Hebrew word, Riut, Riut, which means friendship. How cool is that, right? Friendship. Likely Samuel, Samuel was the author, with some commentaries, placed Ruth as one of the two female writers of the books of the Bible, the other being Esther. Date of writing. Precise date is unknown. However, the writing commences prior to Samuel, 1046 to 1035 BC. The number of chapters is only four. It's a short one. To whom was it written? Mm, say it with me. The nation of Israel. Wasn't to me. Wasn't to you. It was the nation of Israel. Can we learn from it? Yes. Yes, we can. Should we learn from it? Yes. Yes, we we should. Do we? No. Not often. Remember, we change not from seeing the light, usually. We change from feeling the pain of the torch. That's just what I'm saying. Why was it written? To show that a non-Jew was in the lineage of Jesus Christ and that consistent love and dedication to one another and to God is rewarded. This often underread book of the Bible is to me profoundly simple. Those of you who know me know I love the book of Ruth. Love it. Consistent in her love, unwavering in her dedication to Naomi, Ruth is a love story for family, God, and obedience to God's will and word. Ruth follows Naomi after Naomi's husband died, even to the point of leaving her homeland to travel wherever Naomi would go. Now, you understand, in, in these times, a woman leaves her homeland. What? Leaves her homeland? That's a big deal. It's not like now, oh, my husband passed away or oh, I got a divorce. I think I'm going to move from Delaware to, I don't know, not that I would have moved there, no offense to Michigan, it's too cold. Michigan, or from Delaware to North Carolina, right? It's a different thing, altogether different. You're leaving your community in this culture. You're leaving everything, your whole sphere of protection, uh, everything that you could ever depend on, you're leaving it. The people who are committed to protecting you as an orphan or a widow, uh, you know, in her case, widow, obviously, that's you're leaving that. In this day and time, that did not happen. She said she'd travel wherever Naomi would go. Wow. Ruth adopted the people of Naomi, and the people of Naomi adopted her. In spite of the appearance of the situation being dire, Ruth became all action and very little talk by declaring that she would not leave Naomi. Ruth knew how to work. And work she did. In the fields, in the home, and on the way to work, Ruth worked hard. Believers, the lesson you can draw from this, if you want to draw a lesson from it, is work hard. If you're a, a person of faith, if you place your faith in Christ, you testify that you, you are a follower of Christ, a follower of the way, you're a believer. If you say that, you had better be a hard worker. I respect people that don't take advantage of their boss when their boss isn't looking. I remember during... Basic training and other military training and different trainings I've had post-military. You knew who not to trust. You knew who wouldn't have your back if they were all the time cheating. As soon as the drill instructor or whoever you know, was busting you down, 
uh, urine puts you up. As soon as they were out of sight, boom, they go down. Catch their breath. Rest. As soon as they think to turn around, boom, right back up. Acting like they've been in push-ups the whole time. I don't trust those people. I don't trust them. I know they won't have my back. I know I can't rely upon them. Cheaters, you never can. People are trying to... You're at work and you're trying to cheat your boss? Don't do it. Don't do it. If you're a person of faith, you had better be the most dependable person there. You come to work, you better have the best attitude. You come to work, you better be early. Not on time, but early. On time is late. Know your job. Learn your job. You're not going to know your job perfectly day one, but tell you what, learn it. Master that job. Be an expert. Say, well, they don't pay me to bust my hump here. If you're getting paid $10 an hour, work like you're getting paid 20 You wonder why they're not going to give you $20 an hour, give you a raise, because you work like you paid $4 and not the money that you are paid, let alone the raise that you want. Stay off the water cooler. Bring your own water. You know, be to work on time. Get your desk on time if you work at a desk. Whatever it is you do, be cheerful. Don't be the maudlin, oh, this COVID-19, I think I'm, I think I'm just going to do myself in here before it happens to me. I'm just, I'm just, I don't, I'm just, hey, Mr. Page, how you doing, sir? I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to give up, I think. I'm going to quit. It's so upsetting. Why did God forget us? God didn't forget us. He's never forgotten us. He's never turned his back on us. We still got to work hard. You know, there's a lot of people working at home. I had to call my uh, my health provider, health insurance provider, and the lady that answered the phone's in Florida, and she's been displaced by COVID-19, the, the Chinese coronavirus, and and she's working out of her house for a big company. She said, my husband's high risk. He's got COPD and other stuff. And and I've got to, you know, I've got to be at home. I can't go go out and come in. She said, and they basically told us we're, you know, we're a necessity. We're essential because we're dealing with health field, which I agree. Uh, but they made a way so that we can work from home. I think that's amazing. She says, so I love it. I love it. She says, I don't try to take advantage I know somebody right now works just as hard at home, now they're home because of this COVID-19, as most people work when the boss is watching them at work. Fighters going over, I'm sorry. I love them. Sound of freedom, man. Fighter jets. Booyah. Love it. <sighs> Navy and Marine Aviation. Whoo, love it. Make some noise, fellas. Make some noise. And ladies, because there's lady pilots. Lady fighter pilots. Absolutely. Good on you. Bring it on. God rewards consistent effort and dedication of his people. And Ruth was richly rewarded by providing more than she was mandated to provide. God provided overflow more than Ruth could ever imagine. God gave Ruth a great man in Boaz who surely recognized great character in Ruth. In so doing, God placed Ruth squarely in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Doing good and kindness to others should not be motivated by our ambition for good to come to us as a result of our kindness. You don't do it to see what you can get out of it. You do it because God has commanded us to do it. Our intent should be to do well unto others, to honor our commitments, and to follow through on God's direction in our lives. God blesses those deserving of blessings as he did for Ruth. Obedience begets blessing, and often blessings beget an obedient life. We'll stop there. I'm going to say this about that. The way God works stuff out amazes me. I was going to say sometimes, but it amazes me every time. I look at it and I think, man, you work this out. The timing of, of today's broadcast, the specifics of it, you talk about Ruth, you know, and, and she worked hard. She worked hard when she, you know, under very difficult circumstances. You, I see a lot of stuff on tele, or television, the internet, about, you know, people joking about, I'm not even getting out of my pajamas. I'm not even getting out of my pajamas. I'm not going to shower for probably a week. 
Why? You have work to do. If you feel you can render as good a service to your employer who's paying you from your home and they're trusting you in your home to do the work that you're supposed to do, wash your nasty butt. Get up out the bed and wash your nasty rear end. Put on some decent clothes. Get yourself prepared and work. Because I seem to have heard a whole lot of people talking about, I, I can't get my whole lot of work done at work because there's a water cooler right by my desk and it, everybody gather up in there and I have to get up in there because I have to hear what's going on. I can't sit here all day and get half the story. So I get up and go over there. You know, I got to hydrate. You know, I get dry. The air conditioner blow right on my head. It's freezing cold in there. And, and, then, and then it's too hot. And then it's freezing cold again. And then it's too hot. And then the computer screen emits all these things and it dries out. And I get, I get, and I'm, <laughs> meaning my guy give me some water. And so I go to water cooler. I can't help the day up there talking about stuff that's interesting. And then by four too long, I'm 30 minutes. And you know, and I'm not going to miss my lunch break. Mm. And sometimes I can't get back on time. They shouldn't be mad at me. I need my food, my, my nutrients, and I need my hydration. And Lord, this is a stressful place. I need to have my rest of my brain. Don't mess with me talking about I didn't come back in time. If you're a person of faith, you had better be so reliable that person can set their watch by you. You should be so trustworthy that they, they say, let me show you my greatest employee and they should come to you. They should come to you. You say, what's that got to do with COVID-19? If your boss is working it out for you to be able to work out of your home, work you better do. You had better do the best work you've ever done. You should be the most reliable that you have ever been. Don't be mad at your boss if he, if your boss, he or she, has to say, I've got to let you go for now. Because there's small business association loans that will be forgiven if they're used for, they say, for payroll. I know people that their payroll per week is twenty grand a week. Their pay, their, I know people, their payroll per month is over a hundred grand a month. They have to come up with a hundred thousand dollars to pay. And why don't these, why don't these rich business owners pay? Why don't they pay? They could pay their people. You know, we ain't coming into work, but they could pay us. Oh, okay. So no money is coming in and they have massive loans because, you know, they don't have millions of dollars laying around. And you're going to complain at them because they don't dole out money to you for not working just so you the pleasure of you don't suffer. But they got all these loans and they got the bank calling them talking about um, you owe us a hundred grand. You took loans and I understand it's a tough time, but man, think it through. Think it through. Find a way to be innovative and go to your boss and say, or your manager and say, Hey, I believe I can make working at home work, at least for this. Would it be hard if I take my stuff home? Would it be hard if, is there anything I can do at home? I, you know, if they cut us off, I, look, I want you to know in advance, I'm willing to work at home. You can count on me. Let me tell you something. If you were the employee, Christian or not, that they couldn't count on all those other times when they gave you a cushy desk with a cushy chair and the water cooler right down there so you didn't get dehydrated. If they can't trust you when they're looking, you know they're not going to trust you when they're when they're not there to monitor you. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do what do do what you would do if God was watching. Work hard. Work right. Learn your job. Don't be incompetent. Don't be incompetent. If there's books that you can read on your job, read your books. Don't be talking about, oh, I am, it's so dry and just dull and dry. And I, don't wanna, mm. oh, I just barely can't even read that stuff. Oh, who wrote it? If that's what you're supposed to do, learn your job. Learn your job. If you got to take a class, there's lots of online schools, great schools. Take a class if that's going to improve your job. Do what you have to do. Figure it out. Be innovative. Don't be a quitter. We didn't get this great country 
from people who were quitters. And we need to stop being quitters too. Wringing our hands and clutching our pearls. Enough already. Man. I know it's scary. I Believe me, I know it's scary. I'm at the highest risk you can be at. Right? I get... I don't know why this thing is doing that connection, low connection speed or whatever. That's dumb. I'm, I'm looking right at my internet speeds. 999. Come on, Facebook. I said this yesterday, and I'll say it again. People died to give us this country. People are on the front lines right now. I was a vet, I'm a veteran. I was a police officer. I did different things. I'm going to tell you, there's a whole lot of people making a whole lot of sacrifices for this country right now. The doctors and nurses are out there getting it done, fighting hard. The people that work with the doctors and nurses, the people that clean the hospital. Listen, if and I'm going to say this right now. It popped into my head, but it always pops into my head. If you're nice to the CEO, but you're not nice to the lady that answers the phone at the front desk or the person who cleans or empties the trash cans, you're, you're not a person worthy of respect. You're not worthy of respect. If you're a person of faith and you're not known as a kind, respectful person, take your bumper sticker. I go to such and such church. Take that off your car until you straighten up. There's nothing worse than an ignorant Christian. There's nothing worse than a lazy, ignorant, negative, dark-minded, quitting Christian. Not for nothing. But your backyard isn't quarantined. Do some jumping jacks if you're physically able. Don't let yourself gain 40 or 50 pounds of weight. Boy, I was quarantined. I, that's, I, 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 don't, I couldn't get to the gym. Now, you know you didn't go to the gym anyway. You walked in the gym right now, they'd be like, who's that person? Let me see your card. Stop making excuses. Listen, believers, followers of the way, got to stop making excuses. We got to get real about this thing. Stuff's going to be hard. If you want the secular society, the, the people not of faith, the non believers to see Christ in you, show them. Show them. I'm not saying don't defend your home. Because if this thing gets nasty and people start trying to break in, I'm going to pray for your souls. I'm putting one through your being. That's all. You want to break into my house? That'd be the wrong last step. I'll pray for your soul. I'll say a prayer over your body, but you ain't breaking into my home. You're not jeopardizing my people. Nope. Not going to happen. Sorry. Not sorry. But I'm a happy guy. I'm a happy warrior. I'm going to live with joy. I'm not going to live in defeat. I refuse. I refuse. I'm going to say this one thing too. I got a lot of flack. Media Matters follows me and they're all the time trying to mess with me. That's an evil organization. Anyway. They had a lot to say about my denigrating the Chinese communist government and saying that this is an act of biowarfare. Well, it is an act of biowarfare and they did lie about it and they did send 5 million people from Wuhan to the United States before they let on anything was going on. They didn't send them to their own cities. They didn't send them to Beijing. They didn't send them anywhere but the United States. Five million people from the epicenter where their biowarfare research institute happens to be. Pfft, what are the odds? You got to smarten up. Toughen up. Hey James, good to see you man. Hey John. I'll say this and then we'll, we'll close. There comes a time where you have to take stock in yourself and you have to say, okay, maybe you've been a person that's been an inherently weak person, mentally, emotionally. You just crumble. You fall apart real easy. And you're all the time talking about how broken you are. Listen, if Christ redeemed you, you're not broken anymore. He says he's knit you together. Put you together. You are fixed. 
You say, but it doesn't work that way. Sometimes you need a little help ongoing. God's not against that. Some people have uh, chemical imbalances. Sometimes you need a little help. God's not against that. But he didn't, cre- he, he didn't create you to be defeated. He didn't create you to run around all the time no matter how broken you are. Because there's a lost world out there and they're going to be looking to you over the next 30 or, or more days. They're going to be looking to believers. What's that lady doing? She got a bumper sticker on her car. She all the time talking about Jesus. What's she doing? What's he doing? He's supposed to be church guy. I see him getting ready and going to church on Sunday. What are they doing? How are they reacting? I'm not saying being stupid. We're we're just going to run around and lick everybody's ear and have them cough in our face because we're covered by the blood. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. First of all, it makes you look like an idiot. Not that we're to worry about what the world thinks of us, but we know that that's idiotic. And God's not going to have us be chaotic about anything. He's not a God of chaos. He's not, he's not the author of confusion. We know this is a real bio-warfare thing. And we have to be smart. We have to be obedient. We have to do the right thing. Be a happy warrior. Ruth was a happy warrior. She was a happy warrior. She was in horrible circumstances and she was a happy warrior. What's stopping you from being a happy warrior? Let's close in prayer and then we'll be done with it. Father, I thank you so much for this day. Where I am, it's so beautiful. It's so pretty and the sun is shining and blue skies and puffy clouds and beautiful blue and emerald green water. I just thank you so much for it. What a blessing. I thank you for those, each and every one that's listening and the families that are represented by those that are listening. And I pray that you will bless them. Help them to grasp the peace that you give us, that you've laid out there for us. Help them to cling to you in joy and victory each day of this challenging time. Father, we pray for the president and his people and his team We ask that you turn this thing around. We ask that we be people of God and that you are the God of your people. We thank you for the believers and we thank you for those that testify and glorify your name. And we ask that we'll be counted among them in all that we do in the dark times and in the bright times that are surely coming. Protect this flock. I pray this in Jesus, your son's name. Amen. God bless you, and today is a great day to be alive. Thank you for joining Dr. Sean today. Please follow Dr. Sean at www.drseangreener.com and on social media at facebook.com forward slash smgreener. Twitter at the Ninja.